Hey guys, how are you? My name is Stefan. Um, it's raining, now might not be the best time to do this. I kind of want to do a portfolio review. I know that a lot of other people did them. I found it really helpful, so I thought I, was, I should just do one too. I'm going to be going to RISD next year, and I could not be more excited. I just wanted to do a portfolio thing to like show how I got into RISD. Maybe could help out one of you guys do it. Um, to kind of give a little brief overview, when I was really little, I really loved um, art, I was very into it, I took a lot of classes, and then come middle school, I kind of, I don't want to say I gave up on that, but I didn't really see the passion in it anymore, I didn't really find it really a possible career choice, but then like halfway through high school, I kind of like got back into that, I'm very glad I did, and so I didn't actually start my portfolio until I'd say the summer before senior year was kind of late realizing I do want to go to art school in a time crunch I was just kind of like oh fuck like I need to get this done and so my parents like signed me up for art classes all of that sort of thing um and personally I don't think those really helped me um, I've been to like portfolio reviews and all of that and the work that I made there was actually their least favorite work those are very helpful in terms of learning techniques but I would definitely not count on those for portfolio work. I would say definitely make your portfolio work on your own. The thing with classes is that you don't really have the freedom of doing whatever you really want to do or what you're passionate about. You're doing something to learn a skill and that really shows when you're actually like, submitting a portfolio they can see that passion or lack of passion in it. Um, I've always had an interest in fashion however and so I kind of wanted to play around with that a little bit. Um, I was fortunate enough for my grandma to have been a seamstress back in Romania so she like kind of knew the basics of construction of like garment design um, and I kind of learned a little bit from her and then a little bit from YouTube um, and just put together a capsule collection kind of going off of the idea of menswear but playing around with more interesting forms just the more avant-garde feel um, and so that was kind of the first half of my portfolio. I kind of broke it up into fashion and then 2D work. Um, and so to start off with the fashion, this is the first piece that I created for that. The full sleeve shirt along with the high waisted pant. And the shirt is actually the first garment I made um, fully by myself. For this I really kind of wanted to play around with the editing and show like two images side by side of the same look. Um, I thought that was different and kind of let you show more images just in one image because I know that a lot of schools do have a restriction on the amount of images you're allowed to show. I really recommend starting the portfolio with something you're super proud of and then ending on that same note um, just so that you know you start with a bang you end with a bang like you're set and shout out to Sean Waters he shot my entire portfolio I shot everything in New York I remember I was like staying up the night before um, the shoot uh, just kind of like finishing everything this is the flaunt shirt it's sleeveless it's buttonless it really goes with the vibe that I'm trying to show the whole avant-garde um, abstract menswear business wear it's very like modern and it still goes with the vibe of what I'm trying to show this is the third look that I created and it's the same jean as in the first look but I also added this collar motif um, I really wanted to have a little symbol for the whole collection that for this was this collar um which i don't know i found it interesting i like you know collars are usually at the neck but then i just made a belt out of it so that's that look um for the fourth look i had the whole like idea of adam and eve and snow white and prince charming and how they both had the apple it was kind of like an interesting item in both of those stories and so i made a painting of snow white and prince charming or adam and eve either or um, with that apple. I actually, in my graphics class last year, we had a director garment printer, and so I thought I would use that to print onto some fabric and use that as a piece, because I just feel like not a lot of people would have done that. That would have just like, really kind of like knocked it out of the park in terms of like originality. And for the Parsons Challenge, I actually had, because the Parsons Challenge, you had to create a piece and then make another piece based off of that piece. Um, so I just put the painting in the portfolio and then had this be the Parsons Challenge. Um, this is the fifth look, which to be honest is not my favorite, but it does go with the vibe of everything else I'm trying to show. So the sleeves are the same as in the full sleeve shirt. That was 
kind of like a continuing theme and then it's just like cropped really high. I just thought it was something very different. I haven't seen it anywhere else before. And yeah, this one was really fun to make, I must say. Um, this is the sixth look that I made, and I remember this was actually the last piece like in the collection that I made, and I was staying up, I think, the night before the shoot, just working on this. I think it's actually one of my favorites in the collection. I can't say it's the best made since it was... I made it so like, quickly and like at the last minute, um, but I really love the way it turned out and the way the image turned out. And to kind of like contrast it, I added the original idea and then the final product. Um, I know that school is really like like progress work or to see kind of you take an idea or concept from beginning to end. Um, yeah. And then this is the seventh look, which is it has the same shirt as in the first look and then the collar motif is in I think the third look, fourth look. And so it has nothing new, but it's still a new composition and a different way of showing the thing that I created. Um, so I thought that was really cool. If you can do that, I think that's a great way of showing more like of your really good content, uh, but kind of at a different angle. For the RISD challenge, you got to create two pieces based off of one word, and you had an option of three different words. I think it was like light, um, deconstruction and it was to contain something. I chose to do uh, deconstruction. That was kind of the word that appealed to me the most. I thought you could do a lot with that. And so for the first piece, I wanted to deconstruct the actual material that a garment was made out of. And so for me, kind of like the most basic material would be cotton. And so I wanted to reconstruct a garment from the basics of that material, if that makes any sense. But using cotton balls, I put them together using little chain mail pieces and that actually took forever and so I didn't actually finish my second piece for the RISD challenge but don't tell them that because I sent it anyway. For the second piece I wanted to deconstruct different parts of humanity. This was the original like sketch for it so this is a very abstract not wearable piece. But my idea behind this was really to like show the inside or like the soul um, and kind of despite the recent election with Trump and all of that to show that we are all connected. Obviously don't force it or don't fake it but if there is an idea behind something and it pertains to it and it kind of makes the piece better I would definitely write that in the description of the image. With my 2D work the first piece I created was this like black and white drawing and I really love this. This was actually one of the few pieces that I did like that I created in, uh, in one of those like drawing camps or classes and I was really inspired by the architecture in the room that I was in. Um, so I used the architecture kind of like as the base for the drawing and then I also added like this eye or the hands just for like a very like dolly surrealistic kind of vibe to it. This was actually one of my favorite drawings that I've made. This is also one of my favorite pieces that I made in the 2D category of the portfolio. It's a self-portrait titled self-portrait. Um, I used soft pastels to make this and actually like shout out to my art teacher Miss Knight. She handed me these like soft pastels um, just to like try out since I never tried them out before. And so I was just like trying these out and I made that first eye just like as a test and I really liked it and so I kept it going with the other eye and then the mouth um, and I just I liked that so much that I put it in the portfolio as a finished piece. Um, so like I really recommend you just like try out new things just get as much of a broad experience as possible of different mediums, different techniques. If you can think of any different or unique techniques that you haven't seen anywhere else before, I really recommend that. This piece was titled Things That Society Plays With, um, kind of speaks for itself. I wanted it to be kind of like comical and like bright and colorful, yet still kind of like send a message. So that's that. Um, another piece was Mother Nature, which is this piece and I'm pretty happy with this. And this was another one that was done in one of those art class school camps. I also have a few um, kind of more like still life drawings which I'll show right here which I mean they're not like oh he's a great artist it just kind of shows like a skill as opposed to like I, don't know, I just I personally don't think there's any thought behind it for something to be a good piece of art it needs there needs to be like some at least story behind it some good idea. I recognize the 
importance of sending one or two into a portfolio, obviously so that the school knows that you can do that, but beside that, I really don't think they're that important. Um, and just a side note, I feel like each school is looking for something different. Um, I know I said this before, but just like talk to the schools if you can, either in person through a portfolio review or um, through just like shooting them an email. And that way they even just like get your name kind of like in their mind, they kind of like know about you um, when they're looking at your portfolio for real. So to summarize it all, just like definitely go to portfolio reviews if you can, talk to the school, email them. Good contact is something that's very important. I remember that I would always just like email the people who I met at the portfolio reviews, just like, hey, like keeping a conversation going. And so that was kind of like most of the pieces that I sent to all of my schools across the board. There were a few others that I sent to some particular small schools, but like I was saying, like not all of the schools like that so just talk to your school in particular and see what they like and do kind of gravitate it towards that that would give you kind of like an advantage on top of everyone else if you know what they're looking for so hey guys thanks for watching um i hope this was somewhat informative at the least um if you have any questions feel free to leave them down below and i'll see you guys later have a good day what am i saying I don't know what I'm saying. I need my sketchbook.